Welcome back to Breaking the Law. Uh, thank you for joining us for another episode. Uh, today, we're excited to be joined by um, some return guests, uh, Meg Foreman, uh, which is uh, my wife, uh, and uh, Arlie Linscock, Ashley's husband. Yes, yeah, my wife. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> for those uh, that are just tuning in, if this is your first episode, I'm really sorry. Um, but also, thank you for being here. Um, also, you missed some great outtakes and bloopers that we might tack on to the end yeah. because we like to have a good time and uh, humor is one of my core values. <laughs> and it's how we cope and uh, we're glad to have you. Thank you for yeah. listening. Uh, I'm I'm your, uh, your host, Sam Foreman. Uh, I'm an attorney at Foreman Law. Uh, and I'm really proud and grateful to be married to uh, Meg Foreman. Meg, why don't you uh, tell us three interesting things about yourself and uh, what is your spirit animal? Hmm. Not an animal. I would just say I'm an Enneagram One, so okay. that's my thing. Mm-hmm. If you know that, you know what that means. Mm-hmm. Um, surprising thing, I was a character performer at Disney World. <gasps> cool. So that was a lot of fun and very sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hot in florida and when you're inside of a suit it's yeah you know. which yeah. character a lot of them you can be oh you can't a say lot. you were friends I'm with, with. Say I'm you friends say with yes i saw so, that on the tiktok yes so there were a lot in my height range okay. um so but i got That's to do important. some christmas parades and nice. things like that and i was real skinny because it's about 30 degrees hotter in the costume than it is outside at the time oh my gosh i can't imagine um you have to change clothes after every time you go out because you're drenched so yeah that was that was fun um what else that's usually my thing like that i tell people a lot yeah put you on the spot with three yeah uh I'll, i'll give you two interesting things okay um, uh, Meg is the most fabulous organizer that I have ever met oh, in my life. She's I love very to organize. organized. Um, okay. I have a label maker and yeah, like, I have this you very know? confusing mixture of peace oh. and anxiety at how, um, organized you are. It's wonderful. Oh, I have um, somewhat of a photographic memory. Oh, yeah. that's cool. So yeah, if he ever cleans stuff, I just, I go back around and move stuff back because I can tell. If he's like moved anything like a quarter of an inch, uh-huh. so which I'm so grateful of things, you know. Right, you're just gonna put it back. Yeah, I'm just gonna mm-hmm. put it back where it's yeah. supposed to be. Yeah. So yeah. that's uh, the opposite of me. I have almost no memory, so I remember nothing. I don't know where anything is. I don't know what time anything <laughs> is, or where we're going, or when we're leaving, or how to get there. But uh, you know, that have fits, that fits with my skill of not being able to see what's directly in front of me. Right. So, mm. oh. You know, don't where's I the ketchup? Well, it's right there. That skill. It's a really annoying skill. Very, very good with that. It's like, move one thing. Um, also, I want to apologize for probably being one of those kids that uh, came up and tortured you while you were at Disney World. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, I had a few of those. Yeah. Usually 10 to 12-year-old boys. Mm. I was one so. of those um, at some point in my life. So. Um, I'm so glad you're here, Meg. It's Thanks. so good to have you. Um, I am Ashlyn. Um, I'm an attorney and owner of AB Legal, and this is my better half, um, Arlie. Arlie, you must also tell us interesting things about yourself, and I think I know what your spirit animal is, but I want you to say and see whether I was right. Ooh, now I just want to say something random. Okay, don't ruin um, the fun for me. Let's see, some interesting facts about myself. Um, I'm a physical therapist, and I enjoy that a lot. Um, I... What is, what is interesting about me? You're a very interesting uh, guy. You are covered in tattoos. I am covered in tattoos. We covered that. How uh, many they do you can have? see that. Um, the listeners y- can't see I, it. It's, it's it's amazing tattoos. One yeah. arm, two arm, working on the side. His whole side. So, mm-hmm. are um, you going to stop? Ever? Uh, absolutely not. Yeah. So there's interesting thing number three. Okay. Sure. What's your spirit animal? Who? Um, spirit animal or what I'd come back as? I don't care. Hmm. hmm. Right? Um, spirit animal? Uh-huh. Probably an otter. Okay. That's yeah. not what I was going to say. Just getting to, you know, chill. Um, play true. in the water. Hold hands. Yeah. You, you look really cute, right? Um, and, and they like to slide. I like to slide. Oh, so That sounds like awesome. Like that sounds awesome. <laughs> well, now I need to know what you were going to say. I was going to say a bald eagle. Oh, no, Spoonbill. That's... Okay. Arlene, I went to the zoo mm. one time. This is important for context. Um, and you can measure your length, your wingspan at the Wichita Zoo. Have you guys seen oh, that? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. well, Arlie gets up and he measures his wingspan. And Arlie's like 6'4". 6'3". Um, and <laughs> he 
puts his arms out and he's a bald eagle and i'm like oh that's so cool and so i put my <laughs> arms out and i stretch him out really wide and i'm like oh my what i say was a vulture and i was like you are not a vulture and i was like what and i'm like stretching my little hands out and he's like you're a spoon bill that's such a cute little <laughs> and so now if you look at my phone when ash calls a picture of a spoon bill which are absolutely adorable by oh the way. yes absolutely oh, that's great absolutely there's there's a wonderful movie on netflix that features some spoon bills uh <laughs> lin-manuel miranda does the music on it so it's fabulous i can't remember what the title is and i'm not gonna link it in the show notes because i'm too lazy okay so, well i'll google um, it <laughs> yeah my uh spirit animal would uh definitively be either a sloth or a cheetah because apparently i think those are the two speeds to which i'm willing to commit okay. cheetah was absolutely up there yeah. <laughs> yeah i love it oh that's great well we're really excited to have um you both here thank you for taking the time to do this um and we're excited to chat uh today about life in what we're calling better law right mm -hmm. uh sam tell us what we mean by better law um well i think we're we're still kind of figuring it out um yeah. uh, when i think of better law i think of um things like uh you you've got a culture and a business model that are really harmonized um you've got that authenticity that says hey uh, you know I get to decide as a human being, as an attorney, here's what's on my personal scorecard. Um, and then here's how I'm going to optimize my experience around the things that actually matter to me. Um, rather than here's the scorecard that I must have in order to fit in at this, at this particular firm. Um, and so that's, that's part of what it means to me. It, it's a place that really embraces the idea that we want to create thriving human beings first. Um, uh, and those people will then create excellent um, outcomes from a legal legal perspective. Yeah. Um, so those are some of the things, but it's it's very much it feels like a work in progress. Yeah. Um, if, yeah. And I think when you're defining it, I think it's so important to be constantly in check with your own personal scorecard because mm -hmm. what might be the best case scenario um, for Sam's personal scorecard may not mm -hmm. be what's best case right. for mine. And we, right. we live in a system where the law firm model is what it is, whether it works mm -hmm. for you or me or you or you, you either, you know, um, fit in or d you don't thrive. And I mm -hmm. think what's so interesting about this concept of better law as we talk about it is again, constantly being accountable and checking in with yourself about what your priorities are and what will work for you. And then, having to say those things and own those things um, because, you know, we could live, there are those that would hear us talk about this and say, well, that is nice and squishy and, and sounds great, but how are you going to make any money? You know, how, mm -hmm. are, how are you going to be productive? How are we going to feed our family on uh, your scorecard? And it's okay to say on my personal scorecard is profitability. It, I mm -hmm. want to be profitable. I want, mm -hmm. but I want to be efficient in that profitability. Mm -hmm. And I want to feel like a human being while I'm mm -hmm. doing it. And I want the people that I work with and against and for to see me as a human um, so that they can be brave enough to be human too. And, and so I think, you know, it's just so when we talk about it, it is, it is, I think you're right. It's a work in progress. It, it changes mm -hmm. for who you're talking about it with. Um, but something you and I have both uh, through the support of the people sitting next to us, I think committed mm -hmm. to trying to figure out at least to the extent we can in our, um, in, in our sphere of influence as it is. Well, I think, you know, if we're, we're really talking about it, I think it's important to constantly be working on it and not mm -hmm. ever truly figure it out because once you figure it right. out, it becomes that closed system that yeah. we're breaking out of. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. yeah. And I think with that personal scorecard in traditional law like that's it that's, it. that's mm -hmm. what is there for everyone and then with coming out of that i mean with our firm talking about okay what's your personal scorecard what's this attorney's what's this attorney's what's this attorney's it they can all be different and that's okay because mm -hmm. i mean you have one priority that's higher than somebody else mm -hmm. and that's okay mm-hmm and it depends on season of life, right? Mm -hmm. A person yep. with three young children is my scorecard is going to look very different than a young unmarried uh, mm -hmm. person right out of law school who has capacity that is at a different stage than mine. Right. Um, right. And I think we have to, I think part of it is, is certainly acknowledging, but what I think in my experience is um, we talk about sort of in the traditional model sense, how we, we say, you know, we're, we care about families and we, we care about work-life balance. And when, I don't think it's, I think they mean it when they say it. I'm not remotely suggesting that all, 
Some people don't. <laughs> uh, some places don't. But some people are bad and they right, are liars. Right. And we hate <laughs> them. Um, but for the most part, I think, you know, that just looks so different for everyone mm-hmm. and it means something for ev- something different for everyone. But and like in my experience, when we say that we want you to identify what your personal scorecard is, we being lawyers who are building something better, trying to, mm-hmm. um, we have to mean it and we have to... Mm-hmm divorce ourselves from this ability to judge okay well i my personal scorecard is productivity in in work and so that's okay but this person over here if they're their highest mm-hmm. ranking thing on right. their scorecard is wanting right. to produce enough to feed their family but getting to spend more time with family right. we have to let them have it and support that and respect it and not say ugh well, that doesn't yeah. vibe with me. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, a thought that comes to my mind, Ashlyn, and I'd be curious for your take on, because I know that um, you're much more active in um, uh, the DEIB space mm-hmm. than I am, um, and it's because I hate people who are different than me. You and do. I want everyone to I know do. that. <laughs> I do um, know that about you. You just hate people in general, don't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, people think of me, and they think, um, that's a hateful person. Um, uh <laughs> Oh man, this this got off track quickly. Um, uh, uh, but on that scorecard dynamic, that seems like a really consistent value theme that runs through traditional law firms. Is that um, in order to thrive, you have to be the same, and that yes. there's not room for difference. Yes. Um, and I hadn't made that connection until you were just talking about it right now about how. That not only um, extends, I think, to the lack of authenticity and the friction that's created on an individual human experience level for right. everyone, but also um, when it comes to uh, the experience historically, especially of women and minorities and their advancement in the law. And I, I'm really curious for your take on that. Yeah, I think <clears throat> no matter how hard we try to say that we want to create or allow and create space for DE&IB in the industry until we take a look at and get really honest with ourselves to suggest that the system was set up to really only serve a serve well um, people who aren't necessarily balancing the variety of factors mm-hmm. that people who may, are in an um, underrepresented group or the system was not built for us. Mm -hmm. Um, It was not built for me. It was not built for me to be a really good mom and a really good lawyer. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't, it's really hard for people who the system works for to say, well, there's, it was working. It it doesn't work. Um, It's not built to work for me. Um, And until we really recognize that and say, we can no longer ask people who it wasn't built for to adopt themselves into a system that wasn't made for them. Um, And we have to get real with ourselves and say, um, this is a massive change. It it can't go on like this because what it requires, and we hear this a lot, and Meg, I don't know um, if you've heard this or resonated with this too, um, you know, as, as a working mother, I'm expected to mom like I don't have a job and I'm expected to work like I'm not a mom. And I, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know in my entire experience been being married to Arlie where anyone's ever asked you if you're a working dad, if anyone's ever said, so are you a working dad? And you know, they, but people ask me all the time if I'm a working mom. And so the system wasn't built for me. Um, and, um, no matter how hard we try to create space, Um, until the system changes it true I just don't think we can reach that level um, of complete belonging um, inside um, as much as we want to so I don't know if I answered the question uh, no I I I hope I did yeah Yeah. I thought it was a good answer and I think for those that are um, following along if you're not familiar with the term DEIB oh yeah that's diversity equity inclusion and belonging Um, when I think about it from just sort of a simplified approach for myself it's just Hey, I want to be a really good human and help um, people have good opportunities and feel welcome uh, in a profession that I deeply care about. Yeah. Um, And want people to be in a position to thrive, to really flourish, um, uh, and have a have an amazing experience. Um, And I mean, that's how I think about it. I don't think about it. um, I think in terms of some of the historical um, uh, terminology that's used, and I think that that helps me to just approach it in. 
I'm not engaging with this uh, in a way that it's like, hey, I'm picking a side of anything. Not that there should be a side on something like this, but as we should always do, or I feel like as I should always do, approaching it, looking for like, hey, how can I serve this person? Um, how can I create access where maybe they don't have access or wouldn't otherwise have access? Mm-hmm. Um, and how can I be a part of um, pouring into their life the way that other people have poured into my life? And it's going to look different for people that come from different backgrounds that have different experiences that have different priorities, right. um, that have different, you know, things at the top of their scorecard. Um, but I think like we talked about in our, our last episode, um, I think that the traditional models really, really efficient at institutionalizing friction, um, and opposition between people to where something that ought to be so intuitive to feel like, Hey, we're just trying to be good people here becomes some sort of fight because again, it creates this sort of adversarial tension between people that I don't think is necessary to exist. I really, really hate things that I don't understand why they're there. Yeah. Well, cause they've been there the whole time and they've always this been there. A, this is how it's supposed to be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Get off my lawn. Um. <laughs> right. Precisely. Just like that. I, um, I think it's so multifaceted and obviously I could go on and on and on and on for days about the impact of the, the model on, you know, we, we talked in previous episodes and I hope that mm-hmm. uh, you all, if you have not heard them, we'll go back and listen. We've talked about culture, stated culture versus actual culture and mm-hmm. how meaningful that is and how important that that is. But, um, you know, I think it, the truth is in that, there's no argument against it. I've never even heard of someone argue against it, whether they're in a very traditional setting or not. When you allow people to be who they are, they're and not their worst parts of themselves, but when you truly mm-hmm. encourage people to be who they are and bring their best selves, they will perform for you, for themselves, just at a exponentially better rate than if you try to give them a box and shove them in it and say, this is who you are now. And this is what my expectations of you are. And this is how I want you to do it. And we lose so much creative ways of approaching a problem or finding solutions or just having culture. If we want everyone to fit in a box. And I felt for a really long time, like I was in a box and I was like, I would like dip my toe out and like put a pink stripe in my hair and be like, Oh, look at me. I'm like a rebellious (laughs) big law lawyer. Like I'm so, I'm so, cool um but that would that would scratch the itch of me needing to be who i thought i was and i could be this other person in and it same we were talking earlier off air about uh favorite movies and Mm. um one of them is uh very applicable to this situation of literally breaking out of the system by fighting oneself uh Mm. to become free so in in fight club Oh, um, yeah. At one point, he says... We don't talk about that here, but go on. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's Bruno. Sorry. Go on. Yeah. It's Bruno. it's only after you've lost everything that you're free to gain anything. Mm. And um, that's, you know, very similar to... Obviously, you didn't lose everything, but, you know, that breaking down... Uh, at some right. point, you're going to break free, and um, right. and then you can become an individual or two people, you know, and fight in a basement, whatever. But yeah. <laughs> if you don't stop saying good things, Sam's going to kick me out of the co-host spot and make you the co-host of the podcast. Uh, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about it until now, but now I can't stop thinking uh, about it. So, uh, uh, as, <laughs> as long as you keep the fridge stocked, I'm here. As long as there's cosmic stardust, we're always in. <laughs> our, our, our uh, podcast producer is the best. Um, the very yes, best. Yeah. Yes. Jason, make sure that you link um, yourself and your business in the show notes for anybody that's interested. Podcast Podcast solutions yeah, it's uh, great is uh, amazing. They're doing a wonderful job, um, and they do have an amazing fridge. Um, it's <laughs> my favorite. Um, Ashlyn, I have to say, you talking about people needing to fit into this box made mm-hmm. me think about if, like, the system, the trust is in the system, and the trust is not in the people. Yeah. Mm. So, oh, that gave me goosebumps. Well, <laughs> yeah. That's really good. Yeah. In that traditional law, because when you break out of that, it's more about the person. Yeah. And you're mm. trusting them to take something and launch and go off with that. Yeah. But when you can't do that, you're having to trust in a system that's broken. Yeah. You're totally right. And you give and give and trust and trust. Um, mm-hmm. And you have well-intentioned for the most part humans also trusting the system and then yeah it 
it's broken. It, mm-hmm. it doesn't yeah. serve everyone all the mm-hmm. time. Well, and I think that, I mean, when we talk about scorecards and at some point, you yeah, know, maybe we'll develop a tool that'll help, help folks do some deep thinking about their own personal scorecards in a really productive way. I think that most people come into the law with a similar scorecard. They think, I want to be a really good attorney. I want to do really great work. I want to make some good money. I want to take great care of my family. I want to be involved in my community. Um, I don't want to be a jerk. I mean, no attorney comes in thinking like, how can I be as unpleasant as possible and make people hate my guts as soon as they see my name on caller ID or my name pop up in the email inbox? I think um, I know a few of those. Just like <laughs> yeah, you. I bet they didn't start that way. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. They're really old. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I think that over time, the system... We're constantly, as humans, wired to optimize our outcomes. Yeah. And we're constantly operating in this system that's designed to optimize certain things. And so we're constantly adapting. And eventually, some of those things tell you, whether truthfully or not, that, hey, now my scorecard looks a little different. Yeah. And now I have to do these things in order to optimize my outcomes. And it's constantly twisting and distorting, I think, who we are. And then, you know, you have people who wake up and they've become by choice or by default, um, you know, that version of lawyers that people think of when they think of most attorneys. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, there's an old joke. It's the 90% that give the rest of us a bad name. And I wish that wasn't quite so close to the truth. But Yeah, well, it's a cliche for a reason, Yeah. right? And an experience lots of people have had with with attorneys. And Arlie, I wanted to tack on to something you said because I thought it was really, really good. Um, And it was the fight club metaphor of sometimes the biggest obstacle to change is ourselves. Absolutely. And we can't get out until we can get over who we are and where we're at. And I think a big challenge that I faced, and I think a lot of attorneys face, and I didn't have a word for this until a couple of years ago, is enmeshment. Um, and we could spend an entire episode at some point. We probably should on enmeshment. And it's just where, like, like I still find myself doing this, and mm-hmm. I'm more aware of it now. Is like, you know, when you introduce yourself, hi, I'm an attorney. Right. It's not like, hey, I'm a husband. I'm a dad. I'm a guy who really likes Legos. And if that weirds you out, like, OK, whatever. Um, I like sports. You know, it's the lead in is I am an attorney. That is my identity. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's still so ingrained with who I am, not at the level it was before. But there's there's a clinical level where you just become so combined with that that identity that it just creates just so many toxic outcomes. And yeah. um, but I think that that for me has been a big obstacle to change throughout, you know, my career progression to finally get to the point where we were ready to leave, you know, traditional law approach and try to do something different and something new. What was um, that transition like for you? Um, Both of you. Yeah. I'll let you go first, Meg. I talk way too much, which our <laughs> listeners can attest to. Scary, obviously. Cause I mean, it's so different. I mean, going from, a consistent, like a salaried, you know, position Mm -hmm. to then, oh, we don't even know what this is going to look like. So like financially Mm -hmm. scary, um, which is then made us more aware of just needing to make sure that like we have a good like financial plan and, you know, learning how to do that. And I mean, that's come up a lot of seeing just like past, like my family members and things like that as they're getting older and seeing these things happen that you're like, oh, we don't want to end up there. Sure. So it makes you, it's made us a lot more aware and proactive Yeah. with that part. Um, but I mean, obviously scary because of the unknown of not knowing what a uh, better law, untraditional like really looks like yeah because we hadn't really seen it here i didn't know what that looked like yeah so i mean it's still evolving right i mean we have to go back in and change and talk through stuff every year Mm -hmm. like okay like what do we need to change Mm -hmm. and you know it's just evolving every year yeah yeah i i think that that transition period it was a lot of work i mean and and i don't know that we really even knew like when we were starting, it wasn't like, hey, here's this big grand idea of where we're going. We knew we wanted to start a firm because we had enough work. And we needed help. Um, we knew we wanted to do things different, but I don't think we had. And we, we had some personal pain points from our experiences that we wanted to design around and respond to, you know, a lot of which are reflected. But 
Um, don't know that we had the clarity that I feel like we have now, but it was, it was a lot of work and, um, took a lot of, I think the habits uh, and the practices of, um, that traditional law firm approach with us, Mm -hmm. um, for a while. Um, it just kind of, it's those, it's that shadow, it's that echo. It's that, Hey, you know, from a neuroscience perspective, these pathways are really, really deeply rooted Mm -hmm. and, That's not just something where you say, hey, I've decided to leave a traditional law firm. Um, Okay, I'm better now. (laughs) Yeah, right. I'm (laughs) I'm going to be completely different. It's like you still take your work home with you. You still Mm -hmm. carry around that big piece of identity. You still have this um, gross unease regardless of the profitability at the end of a particular day of, hey, I didn't bill 8.2 hours today. I think there might be something wrong with me. Uh, I'm going to go home now and feel uncomfortable around my family and drag them down into this um, emotional morass with me, mm-hmm. um, which is a, such an uncomfortable sounding word. Um, I'm but, glad you um, used it, though, so yeah, we could all feel uncomfortable um, with you. Yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. I, you know, this is like being in a small firm is I want everybody to be equally uncomfortable with me. Um. <laughs> what about you, Arlie? What was the transition like in, from your perspective from sort of a traditional law firm setting to what I'm doing now? I mean, so exciting yeah really mm-hmm. um it's something that i i'm the the financial person in our family and i'm really knowing, good at math though so i could totally handle it if you need me to ash is literally the reason why your your teacher used to say you won't always have a calculator and she'd say i got a phone yeah um, <laughs> anyway yeah. um and so i knew that our family could be supported on on my income um and so for me, it was just exciting. And a part of that was um, some of Ash's uncomfortable, how she was uncomfortable with leaving um, and how, you know, it was scary and stuff. And, you know, I came in and played the role of the the confidence boost mm-hmm. um, and telling her how all these different things. And there were some aspects that I was a little more that I, I, I've because of my history with the military and government in general. Um, I know that some of the forms and stuff that we had to file, which I had no idea about, but um, when they took forever and took us right right to the brink, I, I mean, I was comfortable with that because I know that unfortunately it's going to take a long time for us to get anything done when it comes to paperwork um, in the initial bit. So overall, I was just really excited to see where this takes us. And I don't mm. know, uh, you know, what the thresh, yeah. what the, the ceiling is, or if there is a ceiling. Um, but I, I knew where our floor was and I knew we were above it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Arlie started listening to podcasts designed on lawyers who run their own law firms and would come to me with software ideas. Um, That's and, cool. I mean, he was just so in a hundred percent. Um, and I know for me, the transition was absolutely terrifying. I was mm. sick um, I, my entire identity, which I did not know truly until, um, I left it there or tried to leave it there. I thought I'm going to leave and be healed. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, um, I'm free. <laughs> right. and, and from an idea, from what I was, you know, it was just all felt like so much and I just wanted out and I just wanted to take a breath and not feel like I was taught my value was tied to productivity. And then I woke up every day and I think I went through probably one of the, and I went like a, a depression almost oh, yeah. because I was, I, who mm. I was, was totally and wholly determined by what my value was as a producer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had nothing to measure. And I was like, I knew starting, uh, you know, that first month I was like, well, I know, you know, I, you, I can't even bill my clients until I get some work done. And so I had plenty of work to do. I have unbelievable support from my family and friends, none of those things were up in the air. It was who I was, was being wholly challenged um, mm-hmm. because in I was saying out loud in the world, I don't need this, but internally, I mean, I was a wreck and I would come home just like you said, and then, or I'd be at the office and it would be 5.30 and I'd be like, can you come home? And I'd be like, I've only billed six hours today. I, if, if our family's gonna eat, I have to work. And he's like, that's not even true. Like, what do you mm. mean? We can feed our family today. You don't have, but it was so because I didn't have anyone else, no one else was judging my scorecard. And Mm. I was once left with my own scorecard to judge myself. Ooh, it put me in a little bit of a spiral. 
Um, and I'm not healed. I'm mm -hmm. still struggling. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that was in July. So it's not <clears throat> like a, a significant amount of time has passed. But um, even, you know, Sam is not just a co-host, but a, a, has become a dear friend of mine and has been very good to let me say, I is I don't think that's that's not normal, right? Is this like a normal thing for me to be worried about? And he's like, no, no, Ashlyn. That, like I was like, I have purple hair now. Is that going to be weird for the podcast? And he was like... <laughs> We're going to edit it out. Purple <laughs> hair. No, Ashlyn, you can have purple hair. And I'm like, okay, I just didn't, you know, but I, I carry all that stuff with me still mm -hmm. that, I, that I certainly have to heal from. So um, it has been that the period has been, I think, tougher on me than I think you. Oh, just absolutely like, tougher on you than me. Well, because I, yeah. I feel like we see them like they're high achievers. Yeah. They can do what they want to yeah. do. So it's like we see huh. that. But then the system has kind of tampered that yeah. for you because mm -hmm. you were getting judged by all these different things mm -hmm. that aren't valuable to you yeah so i mean thankfully yeah. like we see we see you mm -hmm. yeah oh. and can encourage yeah. that yeah do you Thank miss anything about it sam oh uh traditional law yeah yeah i do um i think that there's there's definitely things i miss about it and some of them are because of you know parts of myself that are still in the process of changing but um, I do miss some of the structure. Yeah. Um, I miss certain parts of the predictability. Yeah. Um, there's a certain comfort in knowing, even if you don't like it, that, hey, here's how I'm going to be measured. Yeah. Um, sometimes. And there were frustrating limits to the utility of that. But, right. Um, Whether it wasn't correctly applied or not. Yeah. But, I mean, and, and I mean, now, I mean, my specific path in better laws is, is as a business owner. Um, it's not to go work for another law firm. And, and that's a different level of pressure um, mm -hmm. to be like, hey, the buck stops here, you know, mm -hmm. and you got to be responsible for people and responsible for outcomes and stuff. Even when they don't ask you to be <laughs> responsible for it, you still feel <laughs> the weight of that. Yeah. Um, and that's a different kind of thing. And there's definitely days where I'm like, wouldn't it just be easier if I was just an employee somewhere? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but I mean, the calling's too great. Yeah. Um, I miss some of the people. So. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Same here. there were some great relationships that we had mm -hmm. that, I mean, have ended because you're not in contact with these yeah. people. So, yeah, I do yeah. miss those. Yeah. Yeah, I miss my How friends. About you? Um, most of, I, I was very fortunate um, and very intentional. And, and most of the people that I am the closest, was the closest with, I'm still very close with. And, and granted, not a significant amount of time has passed, but we work really hard at maintaining those relationships, the ones that, served our family um and that just became true true friends of ours um i miss it sounds crazy but I, because there are parts i'm still healing from but um i miss sort of the ability to know when i did a good job um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. based on someone else telling me that i did and when it's just me and arlie you know, is going to tell me I did a good job all the time, whether I did a good job or not. Sometimes he's believes in me so much. He's like, you did a good job. And I'm like, thanks. Um, yeah, but I tried to show you, you know, like objective reasons. Yeah, right? you do. You know yeah. I mean? Like I, I try and give you measures that apply to you yeah. and what you're doing to show you that because you do, you, you need that affirmation. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. I, I'm, I try to. It's, yeah, it's such a weird thing that proximity bias mm -hmm. that we automatically apply, I think, a discount. It sounds like you guys may do something similar of uh, whenever you know, Meg says something nice about me or I say something nice about Meg. It's like it's automatically discounted of, oh, well, you have to say that. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. we're I think I have, a more, each other. I have more of a problem with this um, than he does. Yeah. So I'm like, I call yeah. my alter ego that says, no, Karen. <laughs> So I'm like, Karen. Karen, he'll give me a compliment. And I'm like, Karen said no. That's not true. <laughs> so yeah. that's been helpful to um, name it. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I think that's not, it's not. It's hard. It, it's so weird that we would put more stock in somebody that doesn't, in the thoughts of somebody that doesn't care about us who, or doesn't care about us to that level, um, who has, you know, fundamentally different um, objectives, priorities, measures. <laughs> Um, than we would in you know, the the our belief that you know, the people closest to us are going to tell us the truth. Um, and I think for, for listeners, especially those that are thinking about like, hey, I don't feel like I belong where I'm at and I yeah. need to make some sort of change. 
you know, whether it's your spouse, your partner, or somebody else that's really close to you, I think you need to ask yourself really directly the question of, do I believe that this person will lie to me? Yeah. Um, or do I believe that they'll tell me the truth? Because mm -hmm. you need to be honest with yourself about the answer to that question. Yeah. Because if you believe that they will tell you the truth, then you have to start listening to some of that stuff. And I didn't do a very good job listening to Meg and believing what she said. And I still struggle with that. Yeah. Um, Cause there's this automatic discount. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we tend to, um, at least I did. I believed Arlie, but um, I, not as much. I absolutely gave him, you know, the discount and I was like, mm -hmm. okay, well, you know, I had your kids, so you owe me. Thank you. <laughs> um, but you know, it is also when you're really evaluating where you're taking your information from and what, what you believe you're capable of, and especially as someone who's sitting around, e even if you're successful in the space that you're in and you don't feel like you belong, right? Even if you – because there are people who don't fit in the space that they're in and it shows through their work product or through their ability to bring in clients or whatever, you can see it. But there are those people, because I've been one, who is – checking all of the boxes and still internally feeling like this is, cannot, I don't feel right. That something is not right about this. And what I would say is when you're surveying, because you don't, like Sam mentioned, has mentioned before, we don't often see self-reflection modeled in the traditional mm. law system or the ability to check in with our own personal scorecards. When people are advising you or mentoring you, especially those that you work with, you have to look and see their lens in which they're speaking to you through because um, Arlie's very good about reminding me of this. What they're telling you, you know, if I say, is this going to work for me? I'm, I don't think I can be successful here. And they're like, you can absolutely be successful here. You just have to wait your turn. And, you know, I go back to Arlie and I'm like, they're saying it's going to be great mm -hmm. if I just wait my turn. And I trust these people yeah. and I love them and I believe them and mm -hmm. they mean it when right. they say it because that's true to their experience. And Arlie says, you have to look through their lens in which they're telling it to mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And it was true for them, but it doesn't have to be true for you. And you mm -hmm. have to, who are you going to believe? Who are you going to to sort of pour that confidence into? And so I think it's, that's such an important point, Sam, and, and one that I struggled with a lot when I was making the transition and the decision because the people who are advising me not to, to do it, mm -hmm. I love and respect very, very much. Um, and it was really hard for me to sort of divorce myself from what is true for you through the lens in which you see the world. Uh, and your personal scorecard is mm -hmm. not true for the lens in which I see the world or the lens in which my family sees me um, and what they're willing to put up with from me or, or not. Um, so, yeah, um, I think there are things to miss. Um, yeah. And being a business owner and um, is has its own pain points mm -hmm. for sure yes. like the mail i don't yeah. know if that's one for you but Not i hate the mail i hate the mail <laughs> used to be a pain point for me i gave that up a long time ago i can't we haven't checked the mail in years <laughs> <laughs> don't mail sam anything noted so you didn't get my christmas uh, card then <laughs> yeah oh no i i did have you on my res people to resent list but uh, i'll take you off now so <laughs> thank you um, uh so i mean what what kind of impact has the change had um on your well-being and the well-being of your family. Um, Meg, why don't you answer this question first? Unless you'd like more time to think about it, and then I will put Arlie on the hot seat, and then we'll just play hot potato until somebody's ready to talk about it. <laughs> well, I mean, just the time. The time that you have to spend mm -hmm. with our kids and me and take care of yourself more. I mean, that's just been such a huge, huge change of, I mean, like I said, in the last episode of just at a young age our kids having such a better bond with you now than they did before when you couldn't be home with them as much you know I mean you're able to have the mental capacity to think about why you're doing things now um, and what is actually best for mm -hmm. your physical health your mental health our mm -hmm. family's health my health um, I feel like you didn't have that capacity before. Yeah. Did you see, you know, not in just like the physical presence, but um, like when you say present, like being able to be just mentally present and not somewhere else. That's what I feel. Yeah. Like it's we just used to have so much more clarity all the time of like when he would be home for dinner and I would sit and look at him and I'd say, are you here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we still exam. have those moments sometimes, yeah. Yeah. but I mean, 
it's not like it was. Right. Yeah. yeah, but now we're scrolling through TikToks to send to each other instead of like, she's working <laughs> and I'm just like... <laughs> we do, we I'm do. right here. <laughs> we'll sometimes send each other the exact same one. So we that's do. awesome. I know. Yeah, we're yeah. deeply in love. And what app is that? Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, so uh, I, I would say, you know, other than um, saying all those same things is uh, you now look at your future evenly, right? Like before your future was more yeah okay you know what's the future for my family but based off of how much i'm working right how how far i progress in this firm mm -hmm. and now it's you know i mean and you've even said this to me numerous times how hard do i have to work to get this right mm -hmm. and and i actually think that's a really healthy way to look at stuff you know mm -hmm. i mean you've got a goal you want how much effort do you have to put in to get there mm -hmm. and because the rest of it is spent with our family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think, I mean, when you describe it that way, do you think it's accurate to say that under a traditional model, you exist for the firm? Yeah. hundred mm -hmm. um, percent. Yes. But when you get into a better law model, um, the firm exists for you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I think under a traditional model, sometimes the firm exists for you, but it doesn't exist for everybody. Right. Yeah. Um, well, and even if it does, people. does it exist for your family? Yeah. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man, not Maybe. gonna cry. Not gonna cry. <laughs> probably, probably gonna cry later. I'm glad I didn't wear mascara today. Uh, <laughs> well, you look beautiful regardless. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I think Meg picked out my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Meg. I buy all of his clothes. Yeah. Well. Um, I think um, it's it's so tough because I I know that. In the traditional model, in the, in the way that sort of the system, um, again, like we, we talk about, you know, personal scorecards and they match up and it and it works. And and my thoughts on whether or not I think that's sustainable long term for those humans, maybe it's not replicable. Is that a word? Mm -hmm. We can't rep yep. that will no longer be replicable for generations mm -hmm. after me. I do not right. see it in the lawyers that we're raising. Right. They're mm -hmm. um, not in the way that um, it's being asked of them, but. Um, I think it can be incredibly telling to, again, have some accountability with mm -hmm. yourself. It is not easy, even still, even after having made the choice and essentially trying to prove to my family that I can be both good lawyer and good mom and good wife. Mm -hmm. Um, it's still hard to hear, you know, that my kids asked, is mommy coming home? Not when is mommy coming home? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Those types of things hurt, um, yeah. mm -hmm. but I must remind myself of them to stay focused because I am an achiever. I will achieve. If given the opportunity, I won't just work to get what we want and then spend mm -hmm. the rest of my time with my family. If I do not stay constantly on top of myself and realign my priorities daily about what really matters to me, I will work until I can't breathe anymore mm -hmm. and yep. for no reason, right. just because that's who I'm an achiever. Right. Well, and I think that that's, that's such an astute observation um, because just because you leave traditional law model doesn't mean that you leave that part of yourself behind. Yeah. I mean, I can speak right. to that from, mm -hmm. from firsthand experience. I mean, I didn't have my, I mean, let's call it what I think it probably was my mental breakdown. And while I was at a traditional law firm, I mean, granted, I started a law firm and then six months later, COVID happened. And then yeah. <laughs> things got a little <laughs> weird, <fine>. uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but it's important for, I think for people to know that if you choose to leave a traditional law firm, um, that is not the end of that experience. Yeah. It is a significant decision to begin something new, but, um, that, beginning does not guarantee you a different ending mm -hmm. well, you have to constantly vote for a different ending and you have to yep. constantly work on rewiring yourself because you're wiring if you've been saturated in that approach that model your wiring is to be a traditional law firm attorney and a traditional law firm human it is not to just flip a switch that's not how it works. If it's how it works for you, please write the book. I will buy it. Agreed. And a lot of them. So I, th I think back to but, what one of your friends who started her own law firm mm -hmm. said to, to Ashlyn was be careful. 
Um, be careful because of how successful mm -hmm. you will be knowing, you know, knowing mm -hmm. how successful you will be. Be, be careful not to mm -hmm. overwork yep. just to constantly try to achieve this, this yep. ultimate success. Yeah. Um, well, as we wrap up for today, um, I want to thank our guests. Uh, my wife is currently leaving me. Uh, <laughs> she's leaving the podcast studio because she's got to go pick up our kids. And as usual, I've been a poor judge of how long things are going to take. And Sorry, I get Meg. Really long winded. Um, Meg, I love you. Uh, you're the best. She is, <laughs> she is seriously the best part of my life. Yeah. Um, I can tell. Yeah, she's she's incredible. And and I hands down would not be here without her. But. Um, Ar Arlie, I'm curious for your take on this as we think about, you know, kind of wrapping up this particular part of our conversation. Um, when you think about better law and you think about what that means and realizing it's different for a lot of folks, but if you were to pick like one thing that for you, for your experience, you think, Hey, I, I, this is what I think of. This is what I'd really love to see and what I'd love for other people to experience. Yeah. So I'm still not 100% sure I'm answering this correctly, but I would say <laughs> individuality, mm. right? So yeah. um, it comes in, in many different ways. I mean, um, you know, we've talked about the system and you think about cogs and you think about mm -hmm. this, this image you have to portray and stuff like that. And then you think of Ashlyn, who now has purple hair. Her website shows her in a pink suit. Um, her, the, your slogan for your law firm is law less ordinary. Mm -hmm. um, it, being individual, being an individual has helped her grow and, and become so much more happy. Mm -hmm. um, now there are the other pieces that come with that. I mean, as you know, individuality, now you're a little bit more responsible for your outcomes, mm -hmm. right? Directly. Um, which is, we've seen is a good thing, but can also be very scary. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a part of it, but, uh, I'd really say individuality, just, just being you and, yeah. um, seeing that growth. That's awesome. Um, I'll give one for Meg and I hope this is what she would say. Um, we'll ask her if, later. You have to, you have <laughs> yeah. to say it in sure. a different her name voice. Will be yeah. in the comments. If not, Karen's going to say no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think it's the. I've realized that my presence is the present um, and that that's something that has been transformative for our family and is something that um, as I continue to get better at that, because it is a process, um, uh, being physically there is not the same as being there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, that that's a huge um, huge contribution to this is that um, one of the greatest gifts we have to give is our presence. Yep, um, absolutely. And there's no substitute for it. Um, I think as lawyers, we're addicted to time poverty, uh, which is a, a concept that I don't know that I fully understand yet, but something I'm starting to really mull over is that we're addicted to the idea that a sign of success is that we have way too little time to go around. Yep. We wear um, it like a badge of honor. Right. Right. Look at how good I'm doing because I have so many things going on that I can't emotionally connect with my six year old right now who mm -hmm. needs his dad to help him read. Mm -hmm. Um, like that's, yeah, that's a really sobering thought. So absolutely, um, you guys but, are kind of a bummer, both of you. Uh, we are harshing the vibe here at Breaking the Law, <laughs> and uh, we don't care if you like it or not. Actually, we really do. Please like it and share and comment. And you could be like uh, my five-year-old, who's addicted to YouTube. Be like, like and subscribe. And you're like, you don't even know <laughs> what that means. Click link down below. Yeah, click yeah, the link yeah, below. Yeah, but please do. Please do. We need. We need it. Yeah, we need the validation uh, from you to well, tell yeah. us that this is worthwhile. Clearly, I mean, once I left, <laughs> yeah. you know, now I'm out on my own. I I need a lot of uh, positive affirmation. So again, you know, it's, it's important that people say that I'm doing a good job. Yeah. Ashlyn, do you have anything to add in terms of like, Hey, better law, here's, here's some additional you know, thought or two that comes to your mind from your experience. The only thing that um, I was thinking, um, and it truly is just, a, I don't know that mm -hmm. it's an answer more than it is just a thought. Um, it's something that Sam and I, um, when we first connected on this topic, both agreed on is, um, you two things. One, um, you don't have to have it all figured out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
you don't have to, you have to have some idea about what's next and what's best. Um, but better law is what's better for you and what's better for your family or better for your, your, the space that you're in the season that you're in. If you can, uh, make that change or, or to attempt to make those changes where you are. I spent a lot of my my career feeling really good about being able to be impactful for younger lawyers that were coming into where I was working. I wanted them to feel safe. I wanted to create a culture mm -hmm. um, where they could talk to me, where they could talk about their mental health, where they could um, be who they were. I wanted to bring DE and I B work into the firm. All of those things are meaningful and impactful. So it's okay if you're not at a place where you can just jump ship and, you know, start a law firm. It takes time, but mm -hmm. you don't have to have it all figured out. You can, you can commit to being authentically yourself in whatever space that you're in and whatever you do. But, um, one of the things that I'm, um, I like most about having, um, access to Sam's brain as regularly as I do is that he cares so much and, and you care so much. I'll talk about you like you're here. Um, about not just creating this for yourself and your family, but really impacting the industry and impacting other lawyers, um, and changing it from the inside out. And I think, um, that's, it, it's so important in, in my little space when I was doing what I was doing originally in July, I thought, I don't, I can't think about anything but me right now. Mm -hmm. I can't think about anything but creating a space for me and my family and being able to do what I need to do. And, um, it's so interesting because even like the little decisions that you make to support me or to support this podcast or those things, they have such a profound impact mm -hmm. on what we're doing. And so I hope that people hear that even little decisions just in the hotel room uh, on vacation mm -hmm. um, can result in such huge positive impact and changes in creating whatever better law might look like. And um, it's just little Sometimes it's big steps. You know, sometimes you just up and quit your job. But sometimes <laughs> it's little steps like just, yeah. you know, trying to be more yourself at work. And it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you all for joining us. Um, thank you to our listeners. Um, yeah. I hope that this podcast is really helpful for you. Um, I hope that you're getting some nuggets out of it that will challenge you, that will encourage you, that you're not in this alone. I mean, we're not in this alone. Um uh, the outcome's not determined. Um, you get to vote every single day with every decision that you make for um, who you are, who you want to be, and what you want your future to look like. And I hope that you'll choose better law. Um, and if you know folks that need to hear this kind of content, please share it with them. Please encourage them that, that they have what it takes um, to make the changes where they're at, whether that's transforming their own firm that they're at currently or law department or whatever function they might be in. Um, and we hope you're encouraged by it. I mean, this is a really exciting time to be a lawyer because there are so many possibilities that just didn't exist a number of years ago. And we're just grateful to get to be part of the conversation. So yeah. um, please like, share, join, follow along. Um, we'll cut a soundtrack at some point with some Christmas carols and yes. holiday favorites. And no, we're not doing that. I but, have a Christmas uh, CD. <laughs> <laughs> you do have a Christmas Eve? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I look forward to hearing it. Um, <laughs> well, we may link to that in the, uh, <laughs> in the show notes. Um, thank you, everybody, uh, for joining us again. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Yeah, thank you. Go break the law. Yeah. Break the law. Break the law. Breaking the law. <laughs>